Good evening, curling fans across New Brunswick, and welcome to the Thistle St. Andrews Curling Club in St. John, New Brunswick. This is the second draw of the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick Junior Curling Championship, and our feature game on sheet five this evening will be between Team Foresight and Team Winter, both rings from Curl Moncton, looking to get into the A event final and get one step closer to a berth at the National Championships in Langley later in January. I'm Sean Thompson. I'm joined this evening by Kevin Kyle. And Kevin, it should be an entertaining game between two club mates this evening. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we were treated to some great uh, curling on the earlier draw. And I expect the same, same this evening. So, yeah, like you said, it's a big game. Get uh, get into that A final and uh, get yourself one, one uh, step closer in this triple knockout format. It is a triple knockout. The goal at this event is be the last team not to lose three games. And Team Winter has done a good job of that so far. They played in the first draw this afternoon and defeated Brooke Tracy's team 9-3. to three. Yeah, the, uh, the score is not uh, really indicative of, of that game. That game uh, was very close. Uh, Team Tracy had opportunities uh, to keep getting back in that game, and uh, it, it, was quite, it really was a battle uh, down to the end. Now, you have a match tonight against club mates. Teams you expect are going to be pretty familiar with each other from their time in the junior program at Curl Moncton. How do you think that'll affect the game tonight, that familiarity? Uh, it'll probably help the teams be a little loose out there. Uh, so not, not so much the uh, nerves shouldn't be much of a factor. Um, so they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And uh, as most, most teams out here are friends and see each other a lot anyway. So uh, I think it'll, it'll, it'll help in that uh, calm the nerves in, in, this, in this big situation. Now, Team Foresight, they came through the preliminaries with a 3 and one record. They come in as the second seed and are coming into their first game at these championships. Uh, do you think waiting for that first game will have any effect? No, I don't think so. These, uh, these, these young teams, they've played a lot of games. They play a lot of games over the season. And uh, they've been in these situations before, so uh, I, I don't expect this to be a different situation for them. O other than the fact there's a lot on the line here, a uh, trip to represent your province, uh, wear those provincial colors at a, at a national championship event. Now this is one of four games going on this evening. Our focus is on the girls' side of the draw this evening. Our other feature game on Treat 7 features couple of teams from the Capital Winter Club in Fredericton, Team Como and Team Campbell. Should be a very entertaining matchup, Team Como uh, defending champions. Yeah, it's Team Como, a lot of experience. Obviously came into this event uh, on the girls' side as, as, as the favorite and as the team to beat. Um, so we'll, we'll watch early on in this event to see if there's any of these teams that are going to give the Como rink a run for their money and uh, and make them earn, earn their wins. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that's going to be the case. Uh, my experience at these national events, there's always teams that are at these provincial events. Is, there's teams that come in as uh, clear favorites, and uh, they don't always, clear favorite doesn't always win you. You gotta play the game and make your shots, and it's, uh, as you said, it's uh, the team that doesn't take the three losses and puts it all together this, this weekend. Uh, we have a couple of games on the boys' draw also going on tonight. On sheet six, Team Nolan from Carl Moncton taking on uh, Liam Marine's rink from Thistle St. Andrews. And on sheet eight, it's Team Peasley from the Gage Golf and Curling Club in Oromocto taking on Team Johnston from the Florenceville Curling Club. Uh, great to see the smaller centers out at uh, the provincial event. Oh yeah, that's, that's great for great for junior curling. It's great for curling in general. Uh, that's, that's that's really good to see. And our feature game, Team Foresight, won the last shot draw for the Hammer, which means Team Winter will be throwing first. 
Lauren Salage is in the hack to get us underway in the second draw. You can see the sweepers there. Corey Pastic, Caitlin Gallant, just guiding it down and it's coming into the house. Got to slow down. Yeah, I think the, uh, it looked like the call there was to come top four. So it looks like uh, Team Winter just uh, want to play it a little cautiously here in the early goings. It's a 10 end game, so uh, there's no need to uh, force the issue early. And the 10 ends is something uh, the junior teams won't have a whole lot of experience at. They only use the 10 end formats at the junior championships and the prelims. Yeah, and uh, certainly, uh, certainly some different strategy comes into play in that ten in game, and uh, and also just being in shape mentally and physically to uh, to be be at your top form right to the end of the game. Kaylee Smith throwing team Forsyth's first rock through the house. Tentative beginning, a bit of a feeling out. Yeah, both teams uh, just had a 10-minute practice. So they, they should have a good indication of uh, what to expect for, for speed. Now, you were here this afternoon, Kevin, were you not? Yes, yes, I was. Uh, how is the ice playing? Oh, very, very great. Great uh, competitive ice out here. Uh, we're seeing uh, lots of curl, four feet of curl. Four feet of curl, good, consistent speed. Yeah, right, ac right across the sheet. And uh, certainly look, look for the outside-in outside shots uh, to be fairly straight on uh, any up weight. So teams have to be careful. They, uh, they keep the broom tight and, and hit the broom. Haley Smith's second shot now. After Lawrence Lodge put up the draw for team, uh, put up the guard rather for team winter. Steady sweeping from Pastruck and Gallant. Sorry, from uh, Vanessa Roy and Carly Smith. So it comes up a little short, left, left corner, which is, uh, which is good setup. Corey Pastruck in the house now for her first shot, second on Team Winter. Just looking to come around. Yeah, the guard's a little further off center than, than you'd like to see, but it's still usable. It's, you can still catch a, a bit of the forefoot and be buried. Sweeper's not touching it. Rock's starting to curl now, starting to dig in. Will it dig in enough? Well, it stays in the house. Back of the forefoot. Yeah, slip behind the T line. I really like to see that rock stay above the T line. Now, Melody Forsyth uh, calling for a hit on the guard. Try to open things up. This is Deanna McDonald, excuse me, playing second tonight for Team Forsyth. Uh, Team Forsyth with a five curler rotation. Vanessa Roy sitting out this game. Yeah, just made a great, great hit and roll there. So with Hammer, they got the corners up. They've got one buried around it. And Team Winter, with Corey Pastrick's, uh, Pastick's second shot, trying to get behind the Forsyth corners. Quiet brushing from Solage and Gallant. I want to make sure this doesn't slide, be slide, slide behind the T-line. Well, they're by the top. It is going to be behind the T-line. Back eight. Hit and roll. The call. So Forsyth team's going to take a take a 
Run at that open rock. Deanna McDonald second. Quiet wait. Looks like the sweepers have to get on it. If they want the roll. Smith pounding it hard. Get the roll back of the forefoot. Uh, it is kind of, it is wide open. Yeah, and uh, Team Winters just going to remove that rock. Caitlin Glant with her first stone of this game. She wants to make sure she sticks around here. If she, she hits and rolls out, uh, then Forsythe's going to have an opportunity to play on that rock behind the corner guards. Sweeper's on it now. It's right on the note. Right. Best off knows. Rolls about T line. Right on top of Wendy's pigtail. Yeah, some uh, very artistic uh, ring designs here at the Bissell St. Andrews Carlin Club. Carly Smith, a little wobbly on her delivery. Yeah, they're looking for the hit and roll here, Sean. Hard sweeping. It's starting to go. They get the hit, but will roll just to the back 12. Still a biter over there. Biter back at T-line. Looks like Olivia Winter is asking Caitlin Glant to freeze to it. Now you mentioned earlier about four feet of curl. If they play this right, it should just have a corner of that Yellowstone back of the house. Yeah, so Team team Winter here looking to split the rings and try to get the force. Don't want to leave that high and leave a hit, a hit and roll. Well, it will be ahead of the T line. Team Winter's uh, playing a little bit of fire here in the early ends. They took a lot of ice on that last one and appear to be yeah. just a bit outside. Yeah. So, Tim, uh, Team Foresight uh, with a hammer uh, has two rocks in here. They make this and we'll have three rocks in there with hammer. I'll get the hit. Roll top eight. So I wonder we'll have to play a hit on this shot. Yeah, and it is a uh, shot stone, that yellow rock. As Olivia Winter comes back for the first skip stone in end number one. Winter, left handed curler. Wade hits the ledge and Pastic on it now. They're going to get the hit. Where's the roll? Just into the forefoot. Team Winter sitting two. Now, if you're Team Foresight, obviously you're going to make a play on the shot stone, and that appears to be the call. Do you try for the double? Yeah, I think in the early end, uh, it's, it's worth a shot. You got, you uh, you make the double, you're, you're line two and three, um, line one and two, and you got an opportunity to get your deuce or more. Job one is just to make, uh, make this top one go away. 
and you may get another opportunity. Uh, that rock, although it's it's behind the, those those yellow stones, uh, with the amount of curl in this ice, I'd expect that uh, you could easily make that with with board weight. Nose hit. I th think it is Forsyth sitting one. They're having a good look at a team winter. Obviously, at this point in the end, you can't measure. Well, and regardless, I think she has to remove this, uh, this yellow stone. Better to roll behind the corners or roll over and split the house? Um, I think either or at this point, uh, as long as you don't uh, leave any kind of double. Now, the problem is trying to uh, if you try to roll over to the open side. Uh, uh, you, you, might, you might end up with a jam. Of it, Olivia Winter, second stone. The lads just cleaning. Now the sweepers are on. Now the sweepers are on it. This is going to nose hit. Leaving Melody Foresight facing two with her last. So it looks like they're going to take the double on. Yeah, you can't nose that top stone. Uh, if you nose it, you're giving up the steal. Yeah, and the first end, uh, that's the risk reward here uh, is uh, certainly in the foresight favor. So uh, you're going to make one go away. So you're risking uh, a multiple point end uh, against giving up one and only being down one and having hammer in the even end. So it's. Uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good gamble. Melody Forsythe. Last shot, end number one. Smith on it right away, Kaylee Smith. Trying to hold it. No. It and roll to the side, but it looks like one for Team Winter. Steal a one and an early one nothing lead. Yeah, and, uh, early in the game, that's a lot of curling left yet. This is the 2020 Papa John's Pizza New Brunswick Under-21 Curling Championships live on Belline TV 1. one nothing the score in the first end in our feature game. Uh, we do have a couple of scores from other sheets if you're interested. On sheet six, the boys game, Team Marine took two in the first end. A steal of two for Team Marine. An early lead over Team Nolan from Moncton. Marine from TSA in St. John. A blank first end on sheet eight. Uh, Peasley and Johnston. Blanking the first end. Peasley from Gage. Johnston from Florenceville. It is Peasley who retains the hammer in two. And in our other TV game on Treat 7, uh, Justine Como took a single point in the first end. one nothing lead over Team Campbell. First yeah. rock for Team Winter in the house. Quick removal call for Team Foresight. Yeah, Team Forsyth could have elected to ignore this rock and throw a corner and uh, play for the deuce, but uh, they obviously have a game plan and just want to keep it fairly close. Lauren Salage in the hack for Team Winter. She's a 12th grade student at Harrison Trimble High School in Moncton, curling for eight years. Uh, she golfs for Harrison Trimble as well, and this is her second stone. 
Earnhardt sweeping again, trying to get rid of the Foresight Rock. No trouble. So both skips uh, content just to uh, remove rocks. Haley Smith is the lead on Team Foresight. Eighth grade student at Sunny Bray School in Moncton. Seven years curling. When she's not curling, she does gymnastics. No sweeping. Gentle clean from McDonald. Hit and roll fully in the house. Uh, teams, teams are uh, allotted a certain amount of thinking time for the game. So certainly these types of shots uh, don't take a lot of thinking and allows the teams to bank some time for later in the game where it might get messy. And, and at this level it is 38 minutes with two one-minute timeouts allowed through the 10 ends. Uh, with additional time, I believe it's four minutes aside allotted in the extra end, uh, plus one additional timeout. The time and the timeouts do not carry over. Solid hit there by Corey Pastic. Her first stone. Keeping it very clean, both teams. And typically the timeouts will be called by the coach uh, in a critical situation where uh, he or she may feel that the uh, call being made may, may, may uh, be a turning point in the game. Tim Forsyth, the coach of Team Forsyth, as Deanna McDonald throws her first hit, but this one will not go in the house. as Olivia Winter takes a look at it and signals for a draw from Corey Pastic. Corey is an 11th grade student at Harrison Trimble High. She's been curling for seven years, loves all kinds of music, and always has her eye on the latest fashion trends. Her second stone of the second act. Yeah, they're just calling for uh, this uh, top four. Gentle brushing from Solage and Gallant. I'll get it inside the top 12. Oh. Deanna McDonald in the hack now for Team Forsyth, an 11th grade student at Oromocto High School in the capital area of New Brunswick. She's been curling for nine years and uh, last season attended the Canada Winter Games. As a member of Team New Brunswick, she was on the women's team that came fourth in the curling competition. Hit and roll. They're trying to get the roll behind the corner. Um, uh, didn't roll quite far enough, but it's a good shot. Puts that rock in a different different part of the ice. You can see uh, the skip's just taking edge of the rock uh, with this turn. And the outside in. Very straight. Caitlin Glantz first stone. Sweepers right off. And it looks like she got that started outside a little bit. Makes contact with them both, but will not remove the shot stone. Pushes it to the back of the eight. Melody Forsyth content to see it go away. The, uh, the uh, red winter stone. Carly Smith in the hack, delivering her first stone of the end. Sister Kaylee. Gently brushing. I want to make sure you don't uh, don't jam this. No risk of that. Roll over to the corner, and all of a sudden, Team Foresight is sitting two. Olivia looking at playing at the back shot stone. 
Caitlin Glantz, second rock. Caitlin, a 12th grade student at Bernice McNaughton High School, curling for six years. Loves to write, draw, and play piano, and will be studying fine arts at Mount Allison next year. Her second shot hit on the back yellow. Really starting to go now. Sweepers trying to keep it on, but they'll lose the shooter. Yeah, they could have elected to play on the top one there, Sean, and although it, it might not have been shot, but just roll in, uh, be above the T line. Uh, so when the takeout attempt was made, there was an opportunity to, for that to be jammed. Carly Smith with the opportunity to split the house now. Carly, third on Team Foresight. 11th grade student at Moncton High, been curling for 10 years, competitive soccer player in the summer. Sweepers gesturing that it's heavy. Yep, so an opportunity to split the rings here and get their deuce. If it sticks around, Winter coming out to sweep. How far can she drag it? Back of the eight. So mission accomplished. Ring split, and this leaves Olivia Winter thinking. Yeah, uh, w without hammer, uh, she needs to make one of these yellow rocks go away. Is it worth it th at this stage to think about uh, playing freezes? Uh, very risky uh, at this stage. Um, you're bringing three into play, and uh, it's early. So, no need to, to take that kind of risk. Olivia Winter in the hack. 11th grade student at Harrison Trimble High School. Her sixth year of curling. In addition to doing this each winter, she plays on the Harrison Trimble Trojans ice hockey team. And this is her first try to the second end. A little, little push out on, on that release there. Get the hit. And stick around for second shot. Now, if you're Melody Forsyth, uh, do you need to make a play on this red one? No, it's, it's number two. Um, you've got two shots. You've got two shots left. Good opportunity too, as a last rock thrower, to establish your your draw weight, and uh, you only you only need f part of the eight foot, and you'd be lying too. Melody Forsyth, tenth grade student at Ecole Lodicee in Moncton, her seventh year of curling. She's skipped Team New Brunswick at A Team New Brunswick at the last two U18 nationals. The bulk of this team, in fact. Aren't sweeping for McDonald. They'll get the hit. Just on the nose. Yeah, great job of hitting and sticking by this foresight team early. Uh, there's been several opportunities where a draw would have got, got the job done and uh, increased the chances of getting the deuce. Um, they've elected to play the hits, and they've played them perfectly. You hit and roll out there, and uh, basically you're looking, you're looking at a blank end. And I guess that's the key thing too, right? Uh, you, whatever shots you're calling, you have to make them. Yeah, that, that's so true. So obviously she was, she was more comfortable with playing the hit. The team was more co uh, comfortable with that shot call. So uh, the right call is the call that the uh, team is comfortable throwing. Olivia Winner's second shot. Now the sweepers are on it. Starting to move hard. Will they get enough of it? No! And a golden opportunity for Melody Forsythe. A draw with a little bit of backing for three with her final stone.
quiet glide back yeah. to the rock. Unfortunate uh, miss there. Melody Forsythe looking for any piece of the paint for three. With the final stone and then number two. You want to make sure you throw this one to the sweepers. McDonald indicating heavy. That should dig in. Gallant coming out just in case. It will settle for three. Yeah, three, sp three spot there for Team Foresight. Played a relatively defensive end with um, a lot of hits, hits and sticks, and and got a timely miss out of the opposition. And the defending U18 champions on the board in a big way. 3-1, Team Foresight leads Team Winter after two ends. At the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick Under-21 Curling Championships. Uh, the other matches still have not finished, or at least not posted, their second ends yet. We'll give you the updates across the sheets when we have those scores. And no need uh, for Team Winter to uh, panic here. It's a 10 end game. It's a long game. Lots of time left. Just come back and get your dues. And the 10 ends, you'll hear people harping on about this, not just at this level, but also at the Scotties and Tankard level. Uh, it is, in many ways, a whole different ball game. It's more of a physical test, it's certainly more of a mental test. Well, oh, certainly. First shot for Team Winter. It's going to the to the open wing. And they are just hanging on the side. Oh my. <laughs> Quality Foresight takes a look. It is in the paint. Early on, uh, this Foresight team uh, has been making a lot of hits. Uh, if I'm Team Winter, I might want to change gears a little bit, uh, throw some guards up, and uh, make the opposi uh, opposition play, play some uh, higher weight shots or, or some draws. Try to play a more aggressive game. That's a Flash there by Kaylee Smith. It, it's not that common you're asking a league to play a pure takeout yes. in the, well, in the free guard era in general. Yeah, typically uh, you wouldn't ex expect to see uh, too many hits out of your league until uh, later in the game when, when you have a lead and you don't want rocks so you, want, you don't want uh, rocks in play Lauren Salaz is second so trying to split the rings here really early this is a real tough way to uh, get a deuce so that shot was uh, was was made perfectly but now the team has to curl a hundred percent. Uh, the rest of the end in order to maintain that deuce. Especially considering through two ends at least how on the ball Team Foresight has been on their hits and this is Deanna McDonald with her first. Typ typ typically if you have the hammer and you're trying to score your deuce uh, you might save that split for uh, later later like down in mates rocks so then you only have to make uh, three shots I only have to curl 100% on those those last two or three shots and I know when I talk uh, with Mike 
club team on Wednesday nights, I talked to them about building an end, putting some guards up, putting some rocks behind those guards, playing a bit of defense where necessary, uh, as the way to get two points, maybe three if you're lucky with the hammer, or grab a steal otherwise. And that was a hit and roll over there. Well, I hope your team listens to you, because if they follow your advice, uh, you're going to win a lot more games than you lose. Probably see you in the club championship. Yeah, the problem is the, uh, the team's execution. Uh, we could use some sometimes. This is the Anna McDonald. Another hit. Right on the nose. Four side sitting one. We do have those updates from the other sheets. In our other feature game over on sheet seven, uh, Team Campbell grabbed two with the hammer in the second end. They now lead Justine Como two to one. And I'll tell you, the boys' games after this shot from Pastuk. Yeah, nice, nice control weight here. You need to stick around. Can't afford to roll out. Right on the nose. Again, Team Winter sitting two. As Carly Smith comes into the hack for her first of the end. The boys' games on sheet eight. Peasley and Johnston played another blank. Still no score through two ends there. And on sheet six, it is another steal of one for Team Marine. Now leading Nolan 3 nothing, playing the third end. Well, this looks close to getting the roll, Sean. Oh, just got enough of it to get it out. Only roll was out of the rings. Winter still sitting one and still trying to split the house. Caitlin Gallant here. Now you've said earlier splitting the house it's something you want to save until you only have to make two three rocks perfect well this is stone six of the end and yeah. it is heavy yeah this is this is a good good spot to uh, to call this split melody foresight will take it oh that is just biting the paint yeah, mission accomplished. Yeah, you don't want to take the plate of the... Uh, I mean, you got hammer to the middle middle of the sheet there. Um, the other team uh, without hammer would love the opportunity to try to get in there. Even if they just get in there to, to be number two behind you, then it makes you very difficult to get your deuce. And I miscounted. That was the fifth shot of the end. <laughs> this is the sixth shot. For Team Foresight. Make the hit and roll out. And Caitlin Glant will get another chance. Oh. Trying to split the house. Caitlin Glant. little lighter here. Pastuk and Salaj are on it. And they will get a, a good nibble at the eight foot to sit two. As Melody Forsythe comes back for her first. Yeah, so she's going to try and get the hit and roll here, Sean. And they roll behind that center guard.
her first rock. Gailey Smith, now McDonald on it. Smith again. I'll get the hit. How far will it roll? Oh, you beauty. Perfect roll. Right on the button. And it's Team Foresight sitting one. There is... What would you say? About half a rock showing? Uh, about a quarter from my vantage point. What are the risks of this shot for Olivia Winter? Um, the only uh, bad situation here is she just flashes everything all... Uh, uh, flashes both rocks. Uh, good plan B here is to scrape that guard, peel that guard away. Now, Olivia's a left-hander, so she was uh, on the side of the line where the rock was showing. So hard sweeping. It's going to be tight. No, just scrapes. Where does that shooter end up? Okay, plan B. So um, that's definitely uh, a good miss where she was trying to hit the rock. Uh, that's uh, still a very good result. And at least she didn't promote the Foresight Stone into the house, the yellow Foresight Stone. As Melody Foresight is back for her final rock. Looks like a quiet draw. I think she's going to try and take that red rock that's uh, biting the wings. That's that's a tough shot with the amount of swing. This is going to be close. Get the hit. You know, I think she might be biting. Yeah, it looks like it. That's a great shot. That's a, and that's a tough shot with uh, playing a takeout with that, um, that amount of curl on the swingy side. Typically, you'd like to uh, see teams throw outside in so it runs straight. Hit the broom. It's not. It, uh, you can be off in your weight. You can be up. You can be down. You're still going to hit the target. Olivia Winter looking at a hit and stick with the final stone in end number three. Salaj and Pastic on it right away. Trying not to overcurl. Swept it out. I think they have the blank. That looked awfully close from my vantage point. Uh, and I think it is a blank end. A very loud and a very busy blank end, but a blank end nonetheless. Still 3-1. Foresight leading winter. After three ends, this is the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick under eight under twenty one rather curling championship live on Bell Line TV one. So Team Winter retains the hammer. Only down two. Here playing the fourth end. Again calling that first rock in. And now you see Winter signaling for the guard. Starting to get a bit more aggressive. Yeah, the fourth end, even end, uh, you really want to get your deuce here. And if you want to play for your deuce, 
Yeah, you you, you got to throw you got to throw a corner guard. Galant and Pastic. Now they're on it. Keeping it inside the eight foot circles. Good corner guard. Moderate height. So Melody asking for Kayla to bring another one into the rings. The thinking for Melody they trying to force Team Winter to play a bit more defense. Yeah, it looks like they want to want to play this and open. That'll settle right back in the forefoot. After some conferring, Winter decides, no, we aren't playing the freeze. We're just going to bop this on the nose. Lawrence Elijah's second shot. Got that outside just a bit, but it's coming back. Not enough. Right on through. And this could be an opportunity to team uh, for Team Foresight. Really apply the pressure early in the fourth end. She called this one to come into the top 12. She has to be careful here that she doesn't leave some time, type of uh, hit and roll behind that corner. So at, at this stage, she, she might want to think of switching to more aggressive and getting getting some guards up there. McDonald on it. They just oh. raise the corner guard. Protect their own, though. Yeah. Very narrow port for the straight takeout, but they're looking just to top take out the top one in the house, our team winter. This is Corey Pastrick's first rock. Yeah, and lots of good things can happen here by choosing to hit this top one. Can hit and roll behind. There's a chance that uh, they can roll behind the center or roll behind the corner. And they'll roll halfway between the two. Team Winter still shot stone. Easy call for the takeout. Very tight ice. Deanna McDonald will deliver a perfect takeout. Right on the nose. Foresight sitting two. And we do have updates now from the other sheets. On sheet seven in our other feature girls game, Justine Como grabs a single with the hammer in the third end. They're all square two. Just starting the fourth end. So Team Winter playing to come around. That yellow stone behind the team line is helping them out. Bit of backing, bit of security if you need it. Oh, that is very close. Yeah, she did want to slide behind the team line there. Uh, they want to stay above the team line. If they'd gone behind it, it just would have made a, a nice pocket for Foresight to, to bury, bury one in there. Our overhead camera can be a little deceptive at times. 
I can't really tell who shot between the two. But I suspect Forsythe's not interested in finding out. Mm. From my vantage point, uh, it looks like red. This is Carly Smith's first rock. Nice, nice quiet wait. Backliner hack. Mm -hmm. But they jam. Does this offer an opportunity for Team Winter? Oh, certainly. So the deuce is back in play. Team Winter with the hammer. In the boys' games on sheet six, it was another steal one for Team Marine. They're now up 4 nothing on Team Nolan. And we finally had a team put points on the scoreboard on sheet 8. It was Team Peasley getting out to a 2 nothing lead with that deuce in 3. That over Team Johnston. Get the hit, but stay up. Yeah, nice, nice control weight there. Just cut it outside a little bit. And ev even with that quiet weight, uh, not a lot of movement. Looks like they're calling a hit and roll here. As opposed to the double. Hard sweeping from McDonald. Knows it. Gives Olivia Winter another opportunity. Caitlin Graham another chance to hit and roll behind. It is becoming increasingly perilous to nose hit here and remain second shot. Yeah, she has to be careful here. If she, and she does roll perfectly buried, uh, then the Forsyth team will probably draw down onto uh, Shot Stone and make it very hard to get a do. So. Might have been an opportunity here rather than play the hit to actually draw in there first. She got a great roll. Fantastic roll to sit two. Both in the forefoot and there you go. Melody Forsyth, Carly Smith both putting their brooms down on the button. The draw is the call. So she makes this draw. She's Basically, a uh, good chance of taking the end away. We haven't seen Team Forsyth play a whole lot of draws in this game. Would that maybe have figured into Team Winter's thinking for the hit and roll? Oh, possibly, and uh, I think Winter was they're more comfortable with the hit and make it makes it does make the rings bigger. That rock was was in the eight foot, so it's what uh, your comfort zone with rocks in the scoring area. Melody Forsythe's first, trying to keep the line. You don't want to wreck on the top one, girls, but you got to get to the top one. And Team Winter still sitting two. They seem to be looking at possible raised takeouts uh, that Team Foresight might have. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try and play the hit and roll. Both teams very uh, confident with the hit and rolls. 
both teams very confident with the hits. We've only seen a couple of pure misses in the better part of four ends we've played. Olivia Winters, first rock. Oh, you don't want the outside of this. They dodge a bullet there. Avoid the jam. Rolled on the wrong side, though. Yeah, so Team fourth, Foresight looking at some type of run back or tap. The risk I always find with uh, these sort of raised shots is that the more moving parts there are to a shot, the more difficult it is. Fair assessment? Oh, for, for sure. Great assessment. So a short run here. It's like quiet wait. She does need to uh, need to stick this. Donald. Now Kaylee Smith on it. Got to get the angle just right. Oh, boy, howdy, is it just right? Yeah, great shot. That's a nice control weight. And this leaves a very tricky situation indeed for Team Winter and Olivia's final rock. If you were curling here, Kevin, what kind of shot would you play? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to they're call and they're gonna get, get, get some help, help from the coach. Yep. Andrew uh, Winter coming out, the coach of Team Winter. You want to you want to you score your, you, you know, you want to try and get one here. Um... You, you certainly don't want to give up a steal in this in this fourth end, but you don't want to play a risky shot that uh, you give up give up multiple. Giving up one is not the end of the world here, so I think I would stay away from playing anything uh, uh, where where you might jam that yellow onto a red. Um, so certainly, it looks like on the intern, I think there is enough curl with a soft shot to tap that red stone back firm in front of that onto that yellow. I think but, that may be the best play. But, um, again, this is one of those situations as a left-hander, she's on that other side of the center line. Uh, so she certainly uh, sees less of that rock than, than a right-hander would. Um, question is whether whether or not there's enough turn to get it in there on, the, uh, on her intern side. And keep everything yeah. within the scoring zone. So, there's very little risk in trying to run your your own corner guardian. I think they're trying that intern tap. Yeah. Oh no! Well, they're going to try and come off, come off their own. With that much ice, they can't be playing a huge amount of weight. So they may be just trying to roll the shooter uh, uh, just softly. Final but stone in end number four. There is a danger of hitting. Uh, there is an angle you could hit this rock and take your own out and give up two. That's why I kind of liked uh, running the corner, running the own corner in. This is I'll get the hit, but not much of an angle. It is a steal one for Team Foresight. 
Again, not the end of the world after four runs. Only down three. You got the hammer. You get the deuce back. You're only down one. Foresight four, winter one. You're watching the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick Under-21 Curling Championship on Bell Line TV One. Some a uh, great final shot there for Melody Forsyth. You'll often hear it said around the curling rink uh, that your job as a skip is to give your team the easy shots and make your opponent shots hard. Uh, well, Melody certainly succeeded in the second part of that equation with her last. Oh, yeah, a mission, mission accomplished. Uh, she made that killer shot and just took the whole end away. And then that was uh, pretty much controlled uh, by the winter team right up until that point. Kaylee Smith puts her first stone just biting the back of the eight foot to start off this fourth end, uh, this fifth end rather. And again, down three, no, no need to panic. Get your dues back. So uh, we're in the fifth end. Uh, after the fifth end, there will be a five-minute break. And uh, we'll, we'll take a break as well. I hear Sean. And uh, so we get two back here. Go into, the, go into the break. Talk to your coach and regroup. And, and we're, we're in for a good finish. Kaylee Smith with her first, or second rather, in the fifth end. I can almost count. Sweepers really working for this. McDonald and Carly Smith. So that. That rock is more of a corner guard, so that's helping out uh, the winter team. The winter team uh, using their corner guard. Lawrence Ladge. So good setup early here for Team Winter. We'll see if they can take advantage of this. sweeping at the end trying to drag it as far as they can I yeah, get that spot just uh, on that left side of the center line where it tends to run a little straight so she didn't get the, uh, the big finish And it's a guard close to center. It may end up uh, helping Team Foresight more at this at this point in the end. That's in a good place for uh, Team Winter to uh, split it on, raise it up, or uh, maybe a mistake from the opposition. The opposition puts it on for you. It's not removable at this stage. We are playing with the five rock rule again this season. Solid draw to the forefoot. Maybe just grabbing a piece of that button. And partly buried. Yeah, good opportunity here for uh, Winter. Make a play on this shot. They can be buried behind the corner or buried behind that center they just threw. And they'll have the Foresight team chasing them. Salage and Gallant were on then off. It's hanging. Get a piece.
piece and roll away. Yeah, I think she just threw a little more weight there than uh, than what the uh, ice called for. Lauren Salage was signaling heavy, heavy. Update from a couple of the boys' games. On treat six, Team Nolan gets on the board. They cancel out the steals by picking up two. They still trail Team Marine four to two, playing the fifth end. And on treat eight, Team Peasley from the gauge steals one in the fourth end. They now lead Team Johnston three nothing. Just getting the fifth underway. Deanna McDonald in the hack now. Yeah, Melody's asking uh, Deanna to just remove this red rock and uh, flop over to be a guard. One thing I noticed last season across all levels of curling is seeing players and teams adjust to the new free guard zone rule, the five rock rule as opposed to the four. How have you noticed it affect strategy, Kevin? Oh, we see a lot more rocks in play. We, we see a lot more messy ends. It's uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, not not so much fun for the skip that's on a clock. But you just have to, one of, one of the things uh, you want to teach the young curlers is just to be comfortable in those situations. You have to be comfortable with a lot of rocks in play and expect it to happen. So by flopping over, uh, removing that front, uh, front redstone, uh, the the Foresight team really opened up uh, the front for the Winter team to take advantage. And they could have gone behind the corner, or either corner, the red or the yellow, and uh, that's what they did. So good chance for two here now for, for the Winter team. Trying the quiet weight hit. They got it. Good shot. They just got it by a great... Great brushing job there. Again, still an opportunity for a hit and roll to either either direction to be buried. So still a good do situation uh, for Team Winter. And you do want to you do want to avoid if your Team Winter nosing it, because then you're out in the open, and you probably jam shot stone behind. Yeah, we've seen both teams uh, make so many hit and rolls. We uh, would we expect them to make them now. So that rock really curled hard off the line. Oh yeah. Hit and just overroll. I think Team Foresight is still shot stone. Yeah, this stone's uh, behind the T line. Carly Smith's second rock. I mentioned before this uh, Foresight team has some pedigree. They've been to the last two under 19, under 18 rather national championships. They got the. Uh, Hosts wild card bid in 2018 at St. Andrews after they finished runner up at the provincial U18s to Justine Como. After Justine aged out last year, they won the provincial under 18s. And of course, uh, Deanna McDonald with a different team went to the Canada Games. Yeah, great experience uh, for that team. So obviously, if they've got that championship experience under the belts, it really helps in these uh, in these situations. Caitlin Gallant trying for the double. There's that curl again. Mm. 
But they'll get them both. And really, the critical the critical thing there was not to make the double, but uh, just to be hit and buried. And give your shot to, to get two. Well, they are only about a quarter buried. And we've certainly seen Melody make, shot, make hits where she could see less. Yeah, the only thing here in this spot, just got to be careful not to underthrow it because we've seen that rocks will take off. So you can throw a little firmer weight here. Um, you really want to make this rock go away. Haley on it. Stone still hasn't crossed center line yet. And it won't cross center line enough. Another rare miss we've seen this game. Uh, one thing our viewers might be interested in, Kevin, I've noticed, especially with Team Forsyth, even though they have both sweepers accompanying the rock down, usually they'll only have one sweeper at a time on the rock. Uh, any particular reason why a team might go that route? Yeah, so there's been a lot of testing by the professional teams, and they found that the one sweeper uh, is scratching the ice and uh, has more, more control over making that rock uh, go into the direction that they're sweeping. So the direction that they're sweeping matters. And so really what they're trying to do is put scratches on the ice that the running surface of the rock can grab and steer, steer the rock. Olivia Winter trying to use that corner guard to sit two. And she will. Yeah, so mission accomplished. She's flying two. She's got hammer. And I don't think the double's on. Team Foresight certainly discounting it. Uh, we have an update from the other uh, women's game right now. Over on Treat 7, our other feature game. If you click on the other game that's streaming, it is Team Campbell who picked up another point with the hammer in the fourth end. Campbell leading Como 3-2. to two. They're playing five there just as we are here as Melody Forsyth comes down for her final stone, trying the hit again. Tighter ice this time, though. Kaylee Smith, Deanna McDonald, on it straight away. You got to get by the guards. By one. By two. By gum, there's your hit. But it rolls for second shot. Yep, she, uh, she got the rock out of the ring, so she's probably going to give up the deuce here, but uh, not the end of the world. Olivia she had to play a hit there, uh, any, any soft draw, draw shot attempt uh, would have brought three into play. So uh, after the break, uh, Team Foresight, uh, they'll still at least be up, up one with Hammer uh, playing the sixth end, which, which is a control situation. This is the final rock and five. Olivia Winter looking for a nibble at the eight foot. And Lauren Solage, Corey Pastic not touching it. Will it dig in? Yeah, it looks a little heavy. Will it dig in? Out to sweep. Gotta get a piece of the eight. Yeah, it looks like she made it, Sean. Good shot. She did. A deuce for Team Winter. Yeah. In the fifth end, but it's Team Foresight who go into the break with a 4-3 lead. 
Yeah, I'm Sean Thompson alongside Kevin Kyle. We're going to take the fifth end break with the teams. We'll be back in a few minutes for more from the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick Under-21 Curling Championships here on Belline TV1. Sorry for cutting you off there. Who keeps ringing a bell down there? <laughs> oh, well. like Lawrenceville's on the board. And they got the last road coming up on Sunday. Uh, Como's playing camp.
certainly had less hair the last time I did this. In the event we finish before Sheet 7, our game, we'll do our wrap-up and leave them to carry the rest of the draw. If they finish first, we'll carry the rest of the draw. And welcome back to Thistle St. Andrews Curling Club in St. John. Second draw of the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick Under-21 Curling Championships. Our game on sheet five this evening. Team Forsyth, Melody Forsyth, the under-18 champions. With a 4-3 lead over clubmates Team Winter, they're both from Curl Moncton. And it is Team Foresight with the hammer after Winter grabs the deuce in five. If you were coaching these teams, if you're coaching Team Winter, whose first stone is settling to a stop, just biting the forefoot, uh, if you're coaching Team Winter, what would you tell them for the second half of the game? Tell them to play play a little more aggressive. Put put some pressure. Uh, keep the pressure on this uh, foresight team. Um, only down one, so it's a good situation. Probably r right where they want it to be when they talked in their pregame, in their pregame meeting, and probably said we, we go to the fifth end break uh, down one. Uh, that's a, that's a good situation for us. We feel like we can still win the game. Hit and roll for Kaylee Smith. First stone for Team Forsyth. If you're Coach Tim Forsyth, throwing yellow rocks, what would you tell your team of girls? I think that, you know that uh, you know they they have the lead. Uh, they have the hammer in the in the sixth end. So just tell them to to pl play play a little defensive. Take advantage of any opportunity the opposition gives you. Uh, but don't press the issue. Um, you, you have control of the game. Make, make the other team come to you. Satisfied with the way the teams have been playing, that will just roll out of the house. That second Salage stone, Lauren Salage, the lead for Team Winter. Looks like it might just be a biter hanging on there, uh, Sean. Hard to tell from this angle. Very close. Uh, as it's behind the T-line, it is not part of the free guard zone rule, regardless of whether it's in the house or not. It can be removed. But uh, Kaylee Smith, that's the second time we've seen her flash that very tricky take out on the extreme side of the sheet. And it looks she's uh, called this one in the house. Not a pure split though. Well she doesn't have the hammer so uh, down one playing that six then even end uh, want to play for the steal here so uh, best chance to steal would be to put some center guards up. This will settle behind the T-line. Back of the button. And we're just going to see uh, the Foresight team in their comfort zone of uh, playing the hits. Deanna McDonald. 
Reverse down in the second half of this game. Good hard sweeping from Carly Smith. They got a piece of it. How big? Ooh, just enough. Of course, this isn't the only game going on in this second draw. Our other streaming game on Sheet 7, another girls game, Team Campbell picked up a steal of two in the fifth end. They lead the defending champions, Justine Como, 5-2 in the fifth end break. Update from the boys' games coming up in a moment. Corey Pastic trying to find the house, come up just short of the paint. Yeah, I think they might find that uh, that's probably a better result. Uh, them being in the house. Of course, at this point, you don't have the free guard zone protecting you. Yeah, so Forsyth team just calling for a hit and roll. Make the red granite go away. And go away it does. The shooter will just roll out. The boys' games have come out of their fifth end break. On sheet six, Team Marine from TSA gets two with the hammer. They hold a 6-2 lead on Moncton's Team Nolan. Uh, they're just getting underway with lead stones in the sixth end. And on sheet eight, Team Johnston from Florenceville Got on the board with a beautiful draw to the forefoot for a single. It is Team Peasley leading Johnston 3-1, to one, also playing six. And this is another center guard. Yeah, again, they're calling it in the house, so uh, came up short. Again, I, I like that result uh, better than, than being in the house. And certainly better to be a little light on those at this point than a little heavy. You can play more with the rocks in front of the house or in front of the tee line more than you can behind the tee. Yeah, and you're going to get a nose hit here or just a short roll. You're going to have a rock to, to hide behind and bring a steal into play. Well, there's your short roll. And, and she's going to play the come around. Caitlin Gallant, made for Team Winter. Second shot of the end. So now with that guard, that guard in play, there's the now there's a steal opportunity you know, for Team Winter. It looked a little tight here. Sweepers so. on it hard now. Salaj and Pastra will get by the guard. Yeah, so I'm going to try and carve, carve it at the end. So, good result. Yeah. Half buried. Uh -huh. So by having a guard out front, uh, Team Winter now has the uh, Foresight team chasing them. And some hard sweeping straight away from Kaylee Smith on her sister Carly Stone. Plan B here, peel the guard. They're by the guard. Beautiful. Yeah, great shot. Staking around for shot. There is the hit and roll there. And I think that is the obvious call. Yeah, but can't ignore this rock here. You, uh, you would be bringing the deuce into play. It's 
So uh, for as far as the end plan, t- uh, Team Winter uh, would not be overly upset if uh, Foresight takes one here. They, they don't want to give up two. So this takes a deuce out of play and still uh, gives an opportunity to uh, get the steal. I know in Skins playing match play, you talk about winning an end, either getting two with the hammer or stealing one. I don't think uh, Team for si- Team Winter wants Team for Side to get any more than a push. Oh, certainly. As that pushes Shotstone out of the rings, no roll. Yeah, I wonder that second half of the half the game, and uh, you, you don't want uh, opposition in a in that control situation where you you have to take a few more chances than you would normally like to. Uh, the blank here is also a good result uh, for uh, Team Winter. Get the force in the odd end and then have the hammer back in the even. It is. And I don't think that Team Winterstone on the far side of the feet, I don't think that's in the house. We might need the six foot stick. Again, the overhead angles can be slightly distorted. Team Winter working hard to get the hit. Rolls just a bit into the open on the opposite side. Yeah, good roll, changes up the ice. Puts that rock in a different spot. This end, we haven't seen too many shots that side of the feet. We certainly did in the fourth. Olivia Winter back now. In the Duke of Edinburgh program at Harrison Trimble High. Moncton's north end. Her second stone of end number six. Gotta get by the guard, girls. Gotta get by the guard. No. Will that guard stick around? Ooh, I think it's thrust out. Yeah, from this angle, looks like it's just out. Leaves Melody Forsyth with the draw for two and a three point lead. Yeah, tough, tough break there for uh, Team Winter. It could have been worse though if they had hit that a little thinner. Final stone in end number six. Just needs uh, any part of the paint. Roth hole 12, McDonald. Kaylee Smith alternating off and on. On and off. They're happy with it. Everybody's happy with it. It is a deuce. For Team Forsyth. And a 6-3 lead after six ends. Team Winter with the hammer and seven. This is the 2020 Papa John's New Brunswick Under-21 Curling Championship on Bell Line TV1. So Team Forsyth with a three-point lead here. Playing the seventh, seventh end. Just going to ask for Kaylee to bring it into the rings. No reason at this stage to start throwing rocks away with the lead position. And now uh, too many ends left.
Both teams will have at least one game tomorrow in this triple knockout event. Of course, neither team has lost yet. Team Foresight has not, not had the opportunity to lose yet. This is their first game. They earned the bye through the first round by virtue of going 3-1 and one at preliminaries. Team Winter won their first match. After going 0-3 at the preliminaries, they beat Brooke Tracy 9-3 this afternoon. Looks like they're trying to sweep this sweep this rock on. Um, they really need a corner guard here, Team Winter. They do have a corner guard. It's a very so, tight corner yeah, guard. So they got the corner, but it looked like they were trying to... I don't know if they had called it in, but... Uh, this stage in the game, uh, yeah, they need, they need guards in play. Second stone for Kaylee Smith. She's going to try and come around the guard that she just threw. Got to slow down. Olivia Winter is on it, drags it to the back 12. So, uh, shaping up for a good situation here for Team Winter. Two guards out front. They got a catcher at the, in the back 12. Lauren Salage. Trying to come through the port and get behind the yellow guard. This will come up a little short. Yeah. Another guard's not the end of the world. Yeah, it does, it does block off that path to the uh, forefoot that your skipper might need at the end. Now with that center guard, uh, with that corner guard being, being uh, close to the center line, they could have opted to come out around the corner guard and play into the middle that way. And if you end up with that rock being short, then you, you don't end up uh, blocking off the whole front. Deanna McDonald's first rock looks quick. And Olivia Winter thinks so too. Through yeah. the paint. You may have the opportunity. I think you do have the opportunity to hide behind your own if you can get through that port, but they're playing the Rays. Yeah, you can, could come around either, either way. Bit of a wobbly oh. delivery from Pastek. Yeah, she got Heavy the weight. Yeah, a little slip coming out of the hack. That's unfortunate. Gets rid of the foresight guard. The two guards in front are now Team Winters. To their advantage. It's still a good, it's still a good setup. Uh, one of the guards is, is close to center, but uh, the Team Winter can still get to the center of the ring for, uh, from two different, two different turns. And this is Deanna McDonald's second shot. Sweepers well on it. Get to the paint first, then worry about burying it. And I think they may just be short. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, Sean. That looks like uh, that has come up short of the rings. So opportunity, Team Winter, bring, bring one in. Update from the boys' game on sheet six. And it appears to be a deuce for Team Nolan from Moncton in the sixth end. Uh, Team Marine. Oh, now they're putting the score up. 
Just a single for Team Nolan. So Team Marine still leading six to three with the Hammer playing seven. That's going to bump and roll. Stone will dig in. Yeah, the weight was up there uh, a little bit on that shot. So it just didn't get the curl. So an open hit here for the Foresight team. Carly Smith, her first stone to the end. Well, hit and roll out. Forsyth still sitting one. Yeah, a chance, uh, another chance to get one in there. For the winner team. A lot, lot of guards up front. I, I sort of question the wisdom of trying from this side as opposed to drawing from the other. It looks like she's decided to try and take out that yellow rock. That yellow guard, she's trying to run back. Sweepers indicated heavy straight away. They'll peel the yellow guard away. Lose the shooter in the process. Foresight still sitting one. Yeah, Melody's uh, asking for this rock to come around those center center guards. Those center guards are staggered, so there's no run back attempt yeah. going to be available to the winner team. And if Team Winter isn't using them cur currently, hmm. what's the harm? But there's a lot of sweeping to be had at this one from Kaylee and Deanna. They need to get to this to the house. They needed to get it past the guards. No risk there. Great brushing. Fantastic sweep. Four side sitting two. Now you reckon you can see about half that from the hack? After the shot stone? Yeah, a good half. Caitlin Gallant with the rock. Corey Pastic and Lauren Solage with the brooms. Like a nice soft weight here. Make sure you stick around. This has got to move. It has got to move. Got to curl. Oh, my clip, it does just touch the back, but not enough to really move it out of the house. It is still Foresight sitting two as the pressure comes on for Skip Stones. We have a couple more updates from Sheet 8, the other boys game. Team Peasley from the Gage Golf and Curling Club in Oromocto. Big three spot with Hammer and six. They lead Team Johnston from Florenceville, six to one, playing seven. And in our other streaming game on sheet seven, Team Como picks up a deuce and six. They trail Team Campbell five to four. Campbell with the Hammer. Both those teams from the Capital Winter Club in Fredericton. So Melody Foresight looking to bury, bury one here on the outturn side. The first skip stone in N number seven. In this, the quickest game on the ice. Sweepers yep. off it entirely now. Bit from Kaylee, trying to get it to dig. Nice weight. Yep. Just just didn't get that finished at the end. No, and it is wide open for Olivia Winter. Yeah, 
And it looks like she can get to this and uh, maybe get a bit of an inside roll. The shot stone. And bring her two back into play. I think the way both teams have been playing hits, at the very least, getting rid of the object stones even if the rolls haven't entirely been as desired. Uh, you do want to get out of this end with at least a point if you're Team Winter. Her first stone, Olivia Winter, and number seven. A nose hit. I think it's still Winter sitting. Uh, still foresight sitting rather but taking no chances this is a hit to take the deuce off the table yeah Melody Foresight uh, doesn't want to leave any any chance here for the winner team to get back in this game she's got, she's got to be careful uh, she doesn't jam this on the back Well, that would bring the deuce back into play. Second stone. Melody Foresight will get the hit. And leave Olivia Winter shooting against three for a final. Yeah, it looks like she's going to have to draw. She's going to have to draw against those three. It's hard to tell from our from our vantage point. Both these teams will be in action in tomorrow morning's 9 a.m. draw. The winner will play off in the A qualifier against the winner of the Como Campbell game on sheet seven. The loser will immediately drop to the B event with a game against Team Patterson in the offing. Team Patterson uh, from the Carlton Club on the west side of St. John. But Olivia Winter here with the final stone in end number seven. So she's playing uh, the hit on the on that yellow stone. It's staying out. So they must feel that they can. Uh, it's staying out. They them. got a. P Ooh. And the shooter rolls out. Count them. That's three. For Team Forsyth, three for Team Forsyth, and a 9-3 lead, and handshakes. And Team Forsyth gets their Papa John's Under-21 Championships off to a roaring start with a 9-3 win over Team Winter. So they'll play in the A qualifier on the on the ladies' side. And for uh, Team Winter, that's just their first loss. So it is a triple knockout event. So lots lots of opportunity uh, for Team Winter to to come back and and get on a roll, get on the win train. If your Team Winter. What kind of positives can you take out of this game going into tomorrow morning? Uh, uh, I think the team uh, team played well. Uh, they made a lot of shots. Um, really, the difference the difference in the game was uh, those two three enders, and uh, so you, you take away uh, those. those